Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about shame. When do you feel shame? Who makes you feel ashamed? How have you let shame stop you? Learn how to deal with and move past shame as we finish up our month focusing on the change of seasons. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired not by my hair that is like this because of humidity. I can only do so much. Sorry for those of you watching on the video. I've wanted to talk about shame for a while. If I could remove an emotion from the planet, it would probably be shame. I think about my own life, talking with friends, working with clients, and how much shame has negatively affected people, how it has forced them to stay stuck, to not live dreams, to have low self-esteem, the list can go on and on. I'm a Game of Thrones fan. I was kind of like meh on how the season ended, but I thought, hey, if I'd been doing a project for 10 years, I might want to hurry it up. I just felt all this time developing all this great character stuff and then kind of threw it away. But if you didn't watch, there is a scene where one of the main characters named Cersei is forced to walk through what I'd call not a town square because it wasn't in a town shape, but it's actually in Croatia, I believe. And why people uh, and a a nun-like person is behind her and all in shame, shame, shame. And she's forced to, they've cut her hair. She's forced to walk naked and just really ridiculing and shaming her. I can't imagine what it would be like to go through that, but I have felt shame. While I think of I would never want to be famous. I would never want to be a celebrity because I can't imagine my every move being monitored and being criticized for that. I think that'd be, you'd have to develop a really thick skin for that. I was inspired because I saw a child. I was thinking maybe they were three or four and they're saying, shame on you. And of course, at that age, they really don't understand shame, but they understand the energy and the emotion behind shame. They know it's quote unquote wrong. They know it's quote unquote bad. And she already had the energy behind it. When I was growing up, my mom had a poem and I wonder if this was a 70s thing, but I'm really excited because I found it on Google. I thought, oh, I can't get a hold of my mom. She's very hard to get a hold of. My parents are retired, but they are not hanging out waiting for our calls. And so I found the poem, and it is a great poem. It is called, I can't believe I just didn't even type in the front line, and I guess I'm not the only one looking for it, but the name of the poem is Children Learn What They Live. If you're a parent, you're looking for a gift for someone that's about to be a parent, I'd really encourage you to check it out, because we grew up with this on our wall. And I think it's got a lot of really sound advice, but the one line, and I would read it, but I don't think for copyright reasons, I could get in trouble and Google's your friend and you can find the entire poem there. But one of the lines about shame is this. If a child lives with shame, he learns to feel guilty. Well, I'm betting all of us out there have felt shame and guilt and all of that. And neither are fun. And so I really wanted to explore today, what is shame, why are we feeling it, and how can we move past it? So what exactly is shame? Shame, when you, when you boil it down, is a belief that you are fundamentally flawed, that there is something wrong with you, that you are bad in some way, shape, or form. I, if I were to define it, that's if, if you were to ask me, what I would say is kind of what I've said for a long time doing this podcast is that core feeling of feeling not good enough, not worthy loved, or not loved, that you're not lovable. So wrong, so wrong. You're perfectly imperfect. 
you are not fundamentally flawed. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. Now, my personal belief system, I believe we chose stuff. Hey, I'm going to come to earth and experience this. There are days I wonder why I chose to experience this. But that's just what I believe. And so when you have shame, really at the core is you feel like there's something wrong with you. Now, what are the benefits of shame, right? Because remember, we don't do something unless we get something out of it in return. Some of the things that shame can do is give you a false sense of hope because you believe that you can change someone else's behavior or belief. I'm raising my hand. I used to really believe that. And not only did I believe that, I felt in some weird way it was my job. Like, I've got to make this person better. I've got to help change them. I've got to help live them a better life. And it took me probably until my 30s to, and especially when people were close to me, not like I took this on for everyone, but I used to feel the shame and guilt that it was my job and my obligation to help fix someone. And if you believe it's something you did, right? It, it, your cause of this, uh, what's going on with this person in life, then you believe you can change it, right? But if you're in that sense of shame, then again, you're going to get the, what you get is that hope. Oh, well, I feel awful about this. If I have guilt and shame, then I can change it. The other thing that shame can do is serve as a roadblock to other emotions that you might choose not to face. Now, you might be thinking, oh, man, shame's not fun. What else? But maybe someone would choose shame over feeling loneliness, suffering, sadness. When you are really in tune and authentically feeling all the range of emotions of life, that can be more difficult sometimes instead of that awful feeling that you're causing someone else. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, I just want to interject in a moment. I've talked about this a lot. This is an aha moment. I've read this in a couple of different books, but what others do and say is about them and how you respond is about you. So again, it's that false thinking of you taking responsibility for someone else's life. And that's kind of tied up in shame. Why do we feel shame? Well, one, it can be a learned behavior. It's like that wonderful child, that wonderful poem about children, which again, I encourage you to check out. Whatever you learn at home, you are going to, that's how you'll be as an adult. I am a child of the 70s, and I don't remember a lot of, there wasn't Oprah, there wasn't self-help magazines, as far as I can tell. Again, coming from a child's perspective, I'll have to have a conversation with my parents and ask them that, but I don't feel there was a lot out there. And, you know, I grew up in a fairly small city, small town. Uh, I don't have any recollection of things going on. And again, so I just feel like, and it's not as an excuse, but it's to be aware and say, okay, things we've really opened up. I think, you know, we have Marianne Williamson, who is a Democrat candidate who's all about love, which is fantastic. And, you know, 20 years ago, I mean, she's got enough ridicule as it is now, but 20 years ago, couldn't have run. So, you know, as we grow and change, there are more options, but it's something that a lot of us have learned. If we learn with shame, we grow up to feel guilt. If you have low self-esteem, and you know, the more I do work on myself, the more I work with others, the more I talk to people, the more I take classes, I think a lot of us have low self-esteem. So if you're not feeling good about yourself, of course you're going to be more prone to feeling shame. It kind of just goes hand in hand. And again, for me, it's that core, not feeling good enough, not worthy enough, or not loved. Because most of us, that's really what it boils down to. You're going to feel shame when you go against societal norms. Like, again, 
talking about just a moment ago. There's no way you, you could, it's still for a lot of people, you can't talk about love as your platform for a presidential candidate. No way. That's too weird. You're going, no, come on. We have to fight and be angry and yell and scream at each other. She's, Marianne Williamson's completely going against societal norms. Now, obviously, we don't have all the same societal norms. I love, I've moved from Wake County to Johnston County, and it's like night and day, and it's fascinating. And, and for the most part, I love being here. The, the good far outweighs the bad, but there was an interesting discussion around the 4th of July, and there's kind of all these individual rights, and as someone who's fostering cats and kitties and has dogs and knows people have PTSD, at what point do you, because people are saying, why not just go to a town sanctioned fireworks, but everyone in the neighborhood wants to fire their own fireworks. And it's really interesting watching this conversation evolve and got me thinking about different things. And maybe I'll do an episode on that. But, you know, at what point do individual rights outweigh the collective? So it's kind of a little bit like that with societal norms. Not picking up trash or after your dog obviously doesn't cause people some shame. If you've been a long time listener, you'll know that I'm not a fan of that. And I had neighbors that they didn't care. People who have bullied people into suicide. That has finally started to go against societal norms. I think we have finally said, you know what, bullying is a problem here. But people who do that, I'm not sure if they felt shame. Again, you know, would have to examine what's going on in their life that makes them bully, but I don't know if you can feel shame because you're going forward and forward and forward, and even if people are telling you to stop or it hurts, they're still doing it. So sometimes going against societal norms isn't going to cause shame. Self-blame. A lot of times as humans, we will look for reasons why something does or does not happen. I know I have. I really struggled with this when grieving. And, and these moments when I still have pain, it is on one level very hard for me to grasp. Like, this is something I desired. It didn't happen. And yet you have people who stink and they have what I really desired. And so I still struggle with this. Like, is there something else I could have done? Is it my fault? And even though I know I did everything I could, still feeling a little bit of blaming myself. Was there something else you could have done? So if we're blaming ourselves, we're most likely going to have shame twisted in there. And again, a lot of these times, these emotions can run side by side. They can meld together. It can be really complicated. And Again, for me, I think in the work I've done is underneath a lot of it, it mainly boils down to sadness for me. Even under, if you, once I get my anger out, then usually under that, I'm really sad. The anger was just a way for the sadness to express itself. When you prepare for death, you can live your life fully. Where's all that information to your online assets and would people know how to find it? What do you want people to remember about you? If you were to die suddenly, who would take care of your pets? Julie Caraccio can support you in end of life planning and organization. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn more. Now the really important part of today's episode, how do we release shame? How do we let it go? I'm going to encourage you to rethink what the rules are. And what I mean by that is societal norms. Here's an example. It was illegal for interracial marriages to happen, I believe, until the 60s. And I want to watch that movie, The Lovings, I think it's called, until they challenged and said, you know, we were in love. We want to get married. So there was shame in that. And I think there's still shame in people I know if you don't marry someone that looks like you. And so rethink the rules. Rethink those societal rules. Who is it that you want to love? Or maybe it's rules that were set within your family. 
your family tells you that worth comes from being a professional, such as a banker or lawyer or doctor, and you're an artist. And so you're not living up to that rule that your family set. And so perhaps that has caused you shame. So rethink what the rules are. Recreate your own moral code to live by. Because when you're living authentically, when you're living from the heart, when you're living by the rules that you've created, then you won't feel shame. Be aware in your life who tries to guilt or shame you. I mean, it's going to be people, there are probably some people in your family that do this. I bet you might have a friend that does this. And if you do, re-examine those relationships and how much time you're spending. People you don't know are going to shame you. When we were rescuing the kitties, this is what happened. And I moved down here, joined next door. So I still have this box to unpack, guys. By the end of the year, that's my goal. And so life was crazy. I mean, I still hadn't, we still hadn't closed on the house and we had some drama with that. So I've got all this stuff going on. And life is crazy. Anyway, the elderly woman will reach out. And so I said, I, you know, I need help. So I'm in a RDU, which is in my area, animal advocates group. And so people are giving suggestions. I've never, I had guys, I had no clue how fast kittens are. Really had no idea. I've always, we've always rescued elderly cats. So anyway, someone's like, you need to go tomorrow and, and just try to guilt me and shame me. And then my friend Susan, who's been encouraging me to foster for a while and it's been really great because I just talked to her last night. I'm like, I have a kitty food question. And she said, I am here to tell you that you can say no. You do not have to do anything. Do not let anyone guilt or shame you because people, especially like rescue the animal, rescue the animal. And then so many people don't do anything, but are more than happy to guilt and shame someone who says, Hey, I'm willing to do this, need help. Now, again, of course it ended up working out well. We took Anina and Augusta, and as much as it will, I will sob to let them go. If I let them go, then I can support fostering more animals. And the other two got adopted. So in this particular case, it ended up well. And I didn't, I asked for support, said, hey, I need help, received it, and didn't allow the person to guilt trip me or shame me. So be aware in your life who's doing that. And then Maybe it's time to step away. Maybe it's time for boundaries and remembering that what they're doing is about them and how you respond is about you. So don't worry about what their issues are. They're on their own path, but take care of yourself. Feel your feelings. I did a whole episode on this. When I overeat, I don't want to deal with my feet. And if you don't want to feel shame or another emotion, what can you do to release? the feelings of shame or guilt or whatever it is behind it. And and it's say for the example of you are an artist and your family wants you to be a professional, feel that anger. Like you're not accepting me for who I am and feel that sadness. Like, why can't I be accepted? And this is just who I am and feel the rage or the sadness or the loneliness. If you're the black sheep, whatever it is, when you feel those feelings, you can release them and move forward. And again, everything is energy. It's emotions are energy in motion. So if we keep that shame, and, and I expect that I'll feel shame probably the rest of my life. If I can clear it, fantastic. But the more I do this and feel my feelings and clear the emotions, then they're released easily. They don't get stuck. We don't clear them. They get stuck in our, in our energy, in our field. No. This too shall pass. No emotion lasts forever. Even if you aren't able to deal with it, it will pass and you will be able to hopefully release. Or you'll be able to get to a point where you can do some self examination. But no, it will pass. No one's going to be in grief forever. I'm not going to grieve forever. Well, actually, I could choose to grieve forever. I'm choosing not to. But this will pass. I've touched on it a couple times, but don't take anything personally. Whenever people throw stuff at you, that's about them. But if you have high self-esteem, you understand you're loved, you're worthy, you're good enough, 
then when they throw stuff at you, the shame's not going to stick to you. So, oh, cousin Susie's doing that. Hmm. I wonder why she's trying to shame me. What's going on with her life? And you can go down that. Sometimes I do that to kind of make a story and because sometimes that supports me in moving forward a little bit and having compassion because otherwise I might get angry and get stuck there. Just remember not to take it personally. It's about them and bring it back to you. Whenever something upsets me, I try to say, okay, this is a gift because obviously you still have some more healing to do. What is it that you need to heal, Julie? Let go of self-blame. Accept you're not perfect or you're perfectly imperfect and simply look at the facts. You get neutral. Maybe things were out of your control. I tell this story. I write grants. I, very rarely, but cause I believe in, I will write grants, but I was a director of development, grant writer, and so did that for a long time. And so when I first moved out from Los Angeles, I did these grants, and they're these big USDA grants. Well, I did them, I did, was it three or four? Over two years, so I did two rounds, and none of them were awarded. And the people that I was writing the grants for were in Tennessee. Well, the year that I did the grants, uh, I said, uh, who's this? Susan, Susan Collins was, she's a longtime senator from Maine. The year I did it, Susan Collins was on, I think, the head of the USDA committee or on it or something like that. Well, guess how many grants the state of Maine was awarded that round? A bunch. So I had no control over who was on the USDA committee and that our grants weren't chosen. Now, could they have been better grant proposals? Possibly, but come on, things are definitely political. That's, that's a fact. I believe that's a fact that you can say about the United States and funding and you scratch my back, you'll scratch mine. And so I couldn't, they tried to, someone tried to shame me and I'm like, I'm not owning that. I did the best grant I could with what I was given and I have, those were out of my control. I can't control that. And so I just say, if you're ever looking for a grant writer, some people say, hey, write the grant and then once the award will pay you, no, that's not one, it's not ethical. And two, things that are out of the grant writer's control, they might not be able to, you might have the perfect project and still not get it awarded. So in that instance, I was like, I'm not blaming myself. I did the best of my ability and everything is possible. So release your self-blame. Share your feelings. This is something that I have found to be very beneficial. I used to not I used to keep everything inside and sharing my feelings. And I, I do it with one person. It's usually Cotty. Sometimes I will tell a tree. <laughs> I will talk to the cats. If no one is around, I will obviously a lot of time share it with my husband. But if I'm really struggling with something and need to get it off my chest a couple times, I don't want to burden him with that. Hey, you can dig a hole and, and tell your burden to the hole. But when I do that, anytime I'm feeling shame, it helps release it because I can just kind of barf it up, throw it up and say, okay, I'm feeling shame blah, 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 and I'm angry and blah, 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 blah. And then it helps me to move through it instead of holding it inside and never releasing it. And again, what I try to do is really only tell one person, one cat, or maybe all the cats if we're hanging out at once, but just to do that once to help release it. Because if I Keep telling, you probably all know someone in your life that keeps retelling the story of, might not be a shame, but how they were a victim, blah, blah, blah. It's like that broken record. So if we can get it off our chest once, then it doesn't stay stuck. That's what I'm talking about, the emotion and the energy. And that's when it's someone's doing that and that broken record. And it's like the needle stuck on the groove. They can't get past it because they haven't released and shifted the energy. And just a note, if there is someone in your life who projects a lot of shame, they might be doing that as a way to control it because they can't deal with the feelings, it's too painful, or maybe they don't know what to do or they don't have anyone to talk to, and so they project the shame onto someone else. 
people who abuse drugs, alcohol, maybe using that as a way to mask the shame that they feel. And I really believe if I were to write the curriculum for education in this country, I would include practical things like how to balance a checkbook, but I would also include things like learning how to express your feelings, learning how to say things, because if you don't, that leads to bullying, that leads to stuffing down your feelings. We would not have a drug problem in this country if people were more in tune, more aware with themselves, if they were able to express things, if they weren't using, because if you're using drugs or alcohol or whatever else too much, it's, it's because you're trying to stop the pain. That's really what it boils down to. So just be aware. Maybe if you know someone that's like that, then you can maybe take a step back and have some compassion and say, okay, they're projecting this shame onto me as a way of controlling it. And then of course you can, doesn't mean you have to tolerate it. You know, you can have compassion for someone, but it doesn't mean it's your job to fix it. It's your job to change it. But again, the more compassion you can have, that just supports you. And it supports everyone. When we put more love and we put more compassion out there, it's helping shift all that. Take actions from today's podcast. Acknowledge where you feel shame. Practice loving yourself and believing and knowing you are good enough, worthy enough, and loved. Rewrite the rules and standards for your life. Release people who blame, shame, and guilt you. Feel your feelings. Don't take anything personally. Let go of self-blame. Talk to a trusted confidant. Next month, we're talking about hodgepodge. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.